Our final speaker before the beer break is a stunt girl and a magician featured in the Guinness Book of World Records, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and the star of her own Super Channel documentary. Please welcome Carissa Hendricks. Okay, here we go. So when I think open season, I think open season on me, because recently I found myself in the crosshairs of some pretty serious internet rage. I do sideshow acts, I'm a fire performer, I do circus skills and balloon twisting, still walking, and children's entertainment and magic shows. I also own a business, I make visual art, I act, I model, and I write, but when people ask me what I do, I say I'm a magician. I love all the things I do, but it's magic that defines me. When I was seven, I was a student library attendant, and I would hide playing cards in the backs of books in those little card pockets. And when people would try to check them out, I would do magic tricks that would always end with that card winding up in the back pocket of their book and a smug look on my face. <laughs> back then, I didn't think I'd be a magician. I thought I'd be a writer. And in the past year, I've been writing for this magic magazine called Vanish, an online monthly magazine that boasts an impressive 100,000 downloads per issue, meaning there are at least that many magicians. <laughs> it's only been around since 2012, but it's quickly become the third most popular magic magazine in the world, which is sort of like saying you write for the third most popular button magazine in the world. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> only one of those is real, by the way, so that means I had to design two fake bit button magazines. <laughs> You're welcome. A few months ago, Vanish approached me to work on a feature, a feature on me, and I was going to get the cover. They titled it The 15-Year Overnight Sensation, a clever reference to the Eddie Kander quote, The 20-Year Overnight Success. Um, the article would follow my meandering journey to my current perceived overnight success, demystifying my origin story to the magic community who had seen me just pop out of nowhere in recent years and then be everywhere. It took a month to write it and lay it out, and then all the elements came together. <laughs> This was the image we decided for the cover. So that's me, you're welcome. <laughs> it's an homage to the American Beauty movie poster taken by my mentor and fellow female uh, magician, Amber Lynn Walker, a couple years ago in my home with over 100 decks of playing cards. The image has the same bird's eye view perspective as the layout that I created for the article. I was to be fully exposed to the magic community, both metaphorically and literally. I was so excited. I submitted the article and left for Australia to tour my new magic show. I was performing at the Melbourne International Magic Festival on that fateful day in early July when the issue went live. There were lots of compliments and a few dick pics. <laughs> Come on. But mostly good feedback. Till about a week later, a few friends and some fellow magicians started noticing these posts come up on their Facebook feed, saying that the cover was inappropriate, etc. So they screen captured them and started to dig. More comments were unearthed and more and more until all at once, this internet rage that had been building in the shadows for the last little bit was laid bare in front of me, with no playing cards strategically positioned to hide their naughty bits. They came to me over a couple of days, these unedited screen captures of things that people had said in angry moments, maybe not thinking I'd ever see them. The image was shameful. It hurt women in magic and the industry as a whole. It sent a clear message to the magic community that it was okay to objectify women. It told aspiring female magician that if you don't take your clothes off, there's no place for you here. It was unfeminist. It was gross. It was open season on me. This whole thing uh, was at my door and a small army had already stepped in to defend the image with brilliant magicians Amberlynn Walker and Anastasia Spin leading the charge. I watched the back and forth from the safety of my computer and tried to unpack my feelings. I thought about how unprepared I was. I'd assumed there'd be a little fuss over the cover, but this was beyond what I could imagine. I thought about how, what would happen now that the controversy had made this issue the most talked about, most downloaded issue of the magazine ever. I thought about all the real people that would be at the huge 1600 person magic convention in Vegas next month, who all just seemed to hate me. And then I thought, it just has nothing to do with me. Maybe this is about something else. So I took a deep breath, and I started to engage the haters. It was hard to fight down my defensiveness, hard not to vilify, hard not to put myself at the center of the narrative, hard to just listen. But when I did, the discussion started to revolve around fears and grievances I could understand and even relate to. The conversation moved towards the subject of choice, and in a response article in the next issue, I said the following. If you feel objectified or marginalized, I stand by you. 
It's awful when people expect you to do a sexy magic show just because you're a woman. I want everyone to feel like they can dress however they want on stage and not be forced to fit into any mold or set of expectations that they didn't sign up for. That being said, my show is a sexy magic show. If you want to leave the tools of sexuality and innuendo behind when you build your show, great. Don't let anyone make you feel like you need to use those tools if you don't want to, but I want to. In the end, we organized a massive photo shoot at the convention that summer, this last summer. All were invited to participate. Some posed nude, some fully dressed, some somewhere in between, whatever you felt comfortable with. Lots of women participated, but most importantly, we all got the chance to talk, and we were all heard. When the finished image will show all of us standing shoulder to shoulder in support of whatever choice that we decided to make as women in our industry. <sighs> the image will be released in the January issue of Vanish. I'm super excited. Sorry. Uh, I now realize how lucky I was that with a few exceptions, the comments about the cover were thoughtful and respectful. Not every situation is like that. But we're only so quick to cast ourselves as the heroes and other people as the villains in situations like this. People were not haters. They were passionate people with serious concern. Female magicians are a rarity in my industry, but things are changing. At the magic convention in Melbourne, uh, where this all started, three of the prizes for junior magic competition went to young women. <laughs> it was the first time in the history of the competition. I can see why this cover caused so much fuss. Things are changing. I want them to change in the right way. There's lots of things more important than a naked woman on the cover of some magazine that none of you have ever heard of. When we disagree and we feel passionately about those things, and it's harder to listen to each other, it's going to take focus and generosity and understanding. But I urge you to fight Fight the desire to call open season on the people we disagree with, and instead fight for open communication. Thank you.